assalamu alaikum students okay so just for uh, other observers we conducted a, a, a conventional viva online uh, in which we covered the syllabus for second year mbbs in here in pakistan uh, and the units that included were included were uh, cns as a whole it was divided into three units subunits uh, sensory physiology special senses and motor and higher centers were clumped together so these were the three units Iskilava, it was uh, endocrinology, the entire endocrinology, uh, reproduction, uh, GIT, uh, and renal physiology. Okay, so these were the six units uh, that were divided amongst uh, how many examiners? Uh, uh, about six uh, uh, six examiners, four, three, two, four. Five examiners. Five examiners. I just included this uh, for other observers uh, who may uh, want to see this video. So uh, a total of five examiners took this viva. Uh, the roll numbers were randomly distributed by uh, lottery method. Uh, so I got about 18 students, and uh, two of whom did not show up. Uh, so 16 uh, basically were the uh, were the total tally of students that I uh, that I took viva of. Uh, we logged in from our homes. Uh, we used Zoom software, and it was a one by one viva. Uh, we did not do the game show variety that we did for first years. Uh, this one was uh, conventional due to some uh, logistic and um, departmental um, realities that we had to face. Some of the people were not well, and game show uh, format requires uh, more faculty than the conventional format. Uh, so, and again, uh, one more perspective point here is that second year, um, just like first year, we went, uh, we were disconnected with our class uh, since March around 15th. Uh, so most of the teaching for second year, uh, more than first year, because second year started late this year, was online. Okay, conventional lectures, live lectures for this class were uh, very few, in fact. Uh, if I remember, I taught them a bit of uh, motor physiology uh, right up till um, descending tract lesions, decerebration, decortication, all that sort of stuff. So vestibular operators uh, onwards, uh, Guyton is the reference point here. Uh, that was all online. Uh, so that's that. So coming back to the actual feedback now, uh, my main... Uh, addressees are my students, the ones who appeared in front of me. Uh, I've divided the feedback into three points. Uh, have you seen the movie Good, Bad and Ugly? The Good, the Bad, the Ugly, it's an old film. I haven't seen it, uh, but it's a nice, uh, it has a nice tune to it. However, there is no nothing ugly, there's nothing bad either. Uh, it's uh, some points which I noticed as they were good, and some points which um, should be improved upon okay and at the end the third component my of my feedback will be uh, some advice for your future let's go through the good points first <clears throat> all of you were on time okay you were very patient uh, except the two who somehow did not attend the viva for some reason no reason was given but the rest of the 16 uh, you you guys uh, uh, kept your time well uh, I'll go through the bits here, the units, unit-wise, so that you know exactly uh, which parts of your uh, knowledge are, at, at least as far as my batch is concerned, is are good. Okay, they are. My reference point is they are uh, prof-worthy. Okay, so if tomorrow, if your professional exam were to be held, you should be uh, doing okay in in these segments which I've just mentioned. So one is uh, I'll start with endocrinology. Your basic recall of uh, uh, functions of the endocrine system uh, was good. You had a, you had a good grasp of that. Uh, GIT overall was good, including liver. Okay. Uh, I asked questions like uh, the swallowing reflex, second phase. Uh, uh, then uh, I asked about the types of movements of the GIT, uh, law of gut. Uh, I asked uh, uh, gastric ulcer disease a lot. Uh, a few of you I asked, uh, a lot of you I asked defecation reflex. I asked a few of you about ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, um, 
toxic megacolon all three of these questions were not answered but but beyond before this all of the stuff was generally answered okay uh, in motor cns uh, muscle spindle innervation was was uh, reasonable okay um, not much uh, <laughs> in in this list for motor physiology it features in the next segment so you you understand what i'm saying here special senses surprisingly surprisingly uh, the, the reason i say surprisingly is because sensory was good it was it was all right a few students were not on the same page as the rest of you uh, about sensory system i asked questions like basic questions like receptor potential why is it called graded potential label line principle i asked a lot of you almost all of you uh, uh phantom limb syndrome was one of the frequent questions i asked uh, uh pathway for pain then i asked why is fast pain uh, easily to localize and chronic isn't uh, some of the students i asked the affective portion the mood altering uh, uh, action of pain why why was that the case fewer responded on that uh, i think nobody answered that actually or maybe one of you okay but pathway of pain was fine uh, localization question was uh, patchy some of you answered it very well some of you were not some of some of you i could see obviously your face so some of you uh, were guessing it okay while the rest of you were a bit clueless about that to be honest so that that's that's a point that to 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 focus on uh, but special senses coming back to special senses uh, overall it was good uh, i had questioned you mainly uh, in i i i i focused on errors of refraction uh, i looked at accommodation uh, uh, color blindness um, uh, some uh, 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 questions related to retina uh, then uh, what else was there in 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 ear i asked about impedance matching attenuation reflex organ of corti um, and deafness the tests for uh, bone and air conduction the deaf uh, tests for deafness most of the questions were around these lines and and you were you were you were good uh, you recalled well and and that was nice the things that did not go very well uh, uh, and again look this is not personal uh, i.e it's not uh, a customized feedback this feedback is basically uh, an overall pattern which i you know the taste that le it leaves in your mouth after you've had your meal that that taste so that taste is what i'm trying to share with you so the overall impression that i have so uh, the 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 not so uh, good parts uh were well those two were absent though those two students were absent i i was not notified uh i still uh await their explanation that's not good especially in the backdrop of covid and us not not having these uh, this was the prob this was the first viva actually in 8 months how could you leave this viva unless uh allah forbid uh, those two were sick uh or 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 allah forbid if uh, their families were not well that's that's understandable but then they should have let us know huh. overall i felt that your knowledge was uh, very superficial uh, most of you uh, there were some i think two or three very good students uh, but the rest uh, was like i you know you know we can tell uh, you think we can't but but you know we can we can tell that you have studied very strategically for this exam and that you are just bare minimum floating on the surface in many uh, areas of your syllabus so i'll start with endocrinology as soon as i would go beyond the function part so simple recall based question on functions this that the other although i seldom ask those questions i started with class typically hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism the difference between them i asked most of the students how would you differentiate between the clinical presentation of the patient but what i got was a typical guyton based answer of what hyperthyroidism is the hormones go up tsh goes down all this sort of business although my clear instruction was 
clinical manifestations then i i, I had to explain what i meant by this so i actually explained to them that look if a patient of hyperthyroidism comes to you in front of you okay uh, and he is in that examination a gown in front of you uh, what would you see in this patient so i had to explain that to 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 most of you okay as opposed to hypothyroid patient if this person was to was to be in front of you how would he or she appear okay uh, most of you did not either under, understand the question even though after even explaining they were they were sticking to the text that they read from guyton it would appear okay um, and they were thinking of in terms of carbohydrate protein and adipose metabolism because they kept on going to that point and not giving me a holistic picture you understand the holistic picture of a person behind the thyroid hormone problem or the adrenal cortical hormone problem or the diabetic and so on and so forth so clinical correlation or clinical picture actually was uh, was uh, say something that you should uh, work on uh, then uh, a second level difficulty in endocrinology which is a classical uh, problem in endocrinology is asking about a process and then asking about which are the hormones uh, are linked with this process what, what do i mean by that so hyperglycemic hormones if you have studied in segments so you have studied first uh, growth hormone then you finished it then you studied thyroid hormone then you finished it then you studied glucagon you finished it and then you studied catecholamines and you, then you finished it if this is how you have studied in segments so you have individually gone after the hormones you have understand you have understood it so individually if anybody ask you nothing no problem easy peasy right however if someone were to ask you which were the hormones which raise blood glucose now recalling from each one of those memory caches this particular one information one bit of information is difficult in the viva so generally i advise students to study in a mat in a manner and this is endo basically and a bit of renal physiology i'll come to that that you uh, can answer both in individual depth of the hormone and if somebody were to ask you like i asked you about hyperglycemia which are which of the hormones are hyperglycemic you can recall because you have also looked at overall the hormones uh, and worked out the common scenarios by the way hyperglycemia is one of those frequently asked questions most of these questions that i have asked my students and one of the purposes of this why uh, this uh, video is to let you know is let you is is to sensitize you about the frequently asked questions in viva okay now i should have said this in the beginning of the of the video anyhow if you have come this far you know now one of the uh, motives main motives uh, a second is growth growth hormone uh, 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 i beg your pardon growth as a process which of the hormones um, facilitate growth and you know this uh, growth hormone is an obvious thing uh, one of the question that that i really uh, played with those students is growth hormone is fine but still there is growth uh, there is stunting in growth and growth hormone is fine all the other hormones are fine that was a typical uh, uh, trumping question when it came to this patch then i gave them this question in another way i asked them look if there is a uh, if the, if there is hepatic failure uh, from early uh, early childhood would this kid grow now this is a very trumping question in a viva uh, with a scary looking dude like me by the way i did not open the video i they couldn't see me uh, i did this uh, as a favor to them uh, so that they are not scared okay uh, they just could hear my 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 voice uh, but uh, i think two from those 16 could answer this after prompting i prompted them so they just could not come to the insulin like growth factors being manufactured in the kid in the in the liver and growth hormone being dependent on these factors to promote growth and do its other business they just couldn't connect 
so this connectivity will only happen when you read individual hormones and solve solve them uh, for some commonly asked uh, processes one is hyperglycemia i'm telling you this the other is growth and so on and so forth uh, emergency so which of the hormones get released in emergency not just catecholamines cortisol also gets released in, released in emergency okay uh, uh, another uh, question it was glucose tolerance test uh, i think one person answered that none of the other kids uh, knew uh, some of them very very distressingly didn't even understand what glucose tolerance test is they kept on repeating fasting blood glucose and i had to clarify ke beta ji it's not that fasting glucose that i'm asking i'm asking about glucose tolerance test very briefly it is a test which you do when you are not sure about your diagnosis okay when it's uh, when the fasting blood glucose is in between a no man's land it's around 110 to 115 or 20 uh, i i'm not aware of the latest uh, who recommendations but i think it's around 115 uh, uh, which is uh, glucose intolerance it's actually called glucose intolerance not called diabetes uh, diabetes uh, so if the chap has uh, a good solid symptoms of diabetes and but his uh, fasting glucose is coming around this no man's land area then you go for a for a glucose tolerance test okay gtt people didn't know that metabolic syndrome which is one of the main issues especially in your age group uh, of uh, diabetes com- becoming almost a pandemic um, linked to obesity fast food uh, consumption obesity metabolic syndrome diabetes okay so this metabolic syndrome also did not fetch a lot of answers okay then i come to motor physiology motor physiology uh, i taught myself uh, unfortunately we we were cut off uh, because of covid initially uh, we took an initiative on our own the department and we started our own online thing uh, uh, i would say we struggled with online because it was it was online but it wasn't really online Uh, uh these these videos i i thought of later on uh, initially what i used to do and i i am sorry for uh, for all my students who had to bear with this i just used to send them my um, powerpoint presentation lecture and uh, thought they would be good enough studious enough uh to go through them then go through the textbook correlate and then ask me questions and and i was always there on whatsapp and what not but guess what no questions came so probably what happened which i by the way confirmed in the viva they never really did the due diligence uh, i i really wonder if they even went through my lectures um, uh, and if you only go through the textbook and that too at the the d day the just before the d day you are in trouble obviously you are in trouble these are um, huge chunks of information and they have to be uh, delivered yes in a certain way but they have to be studied also in a certain way so i think that was that explains uh, uh, to a certain extent uh, why motor physiology was the weakest in this batch okay um, uh, i think uh, we messed up as a department by only relying on powerpoint presentation and your good sense okay we we failed because of that uh but later on i tried to uh, patch it up with uh, videos i think videos are available from hypothalamus onwards uh, or only hypothalamus actually okay i will try to do some videos on the crucial bits uh, the difficult bits of motor physiology inshallah if i get time uh, so that was that uh, cerebellum was region wise function was not known which was not good enough so people didn't people knew the anatomical uh, structure anatomical division of the cerebellum but they but when i put them to the function of each uh, so i asked them about cerebro cerebellum a lot of funky answers came out uh, some said that it's uh, connected to as in physically connected to the cerebrum i think one of one of one person said that uh, but later on adjusted that it has to and fro connections with the cerebrum and that was that but uh, i think nobody answered what cerebro cerebellum actually did what the function of it was spino and flocculo uh, uh, and vestibulo cerebellum uh, was answered well however cerebro cerebellum 
since it had connections with cerebral cortex and i think cerebral cortex is your is your weak point uh, so that was a problem okay uh, uh one or two good students uh, who i thought were good students i started with memory and they could only answer uh, the memory related information given in Guyton uh, said so they probably didn't go through my lectures which is integrated with Ganong uh, so declarative memory for example they didn't know okay they only knew the short term med medium term and long term which is typically given in Guyton so uh, that can also uh, 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 be enhanced hydrocephalus was another question uh, only one or two answered well uh, and many people dropped it Mm, renal <clears throat> don't 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 start me on renal i taught renal as well and what you if you remember look guys you have to remember when i used to plead with you when i taught you renal i i put my paper away okay because this i know this is coming from the heart right i told you that if in a renal viva these were my words that in a renal viva if somebody if the examiner asks you gfr the definition of gfr okay you are in med school for now about 2 years defining what, what two lines or not defining as in a parrot we we don't produce parrots we don't want to produce parrots by defining i mean tell us what gfr is i am very sad to report agitated rather i got some very interesting and not in a good sense interesting responses to gfr definition can you imagine that then some people fumbled uh, with the value uh, of gfr and remember i told you that if your renal viva starts with such a fumble uh, look people don't want to listen examiners are are to be fair to them they are they are short on time okay they don't have a lot of time they don't have time for o uh, mm, okay i guess let me no they don't have time for that stuff okay and they are not asking you to to solve what einstein couldn't solve they are asking you gfr you just tell them what gfr is and give the value and then let's move on there was one girl and if she watches this video she knows who i'm talking about she gave a very good viva but check this out what happened i started renal with her i actually asked all of my students which unit they wanted to wanted me to start with right uh, so this one this this girl told me the renal i said all right renal is good i asked her gfr she gave me the uh, the the answer of gfr okay this is a good anecdote i asked her for the value and she went blank she said sir i can't remember and then i since i could see her face Uh, I, they, she was she was actually embarrassed that she couldn't remember i said okay well she did give the definition and by that time my standard had gone down guys because of the previous superstars that had passed through so i said all right let me let me ask her renal blood flow key value okay no she wouldn't give me a value so i immediately my impression of her dropped i said okay this person she only knows the definition of of gfr and her 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 she doesn't have knowledge of it i will give myself full marks for persistence alhamdulillah i'm a persistent person and i'm and i and i like my students i i don't i don't want them to fail i don't want them to fail in physiology in, in medicine in life i don't want you guys to fail okay i want you guys to rise right so i persisted with her alhamdulillah later on what a wonderful viva she gave to my hearts i would almost say to my hearts content and definitely if i put her viva in context of the tutti frutti viva that i was having till then uh, i would say she, she would she had the best viva up till that point and i kept on teasing her at every answer good answer complex question answer that she gave correctly i said you know this but you don't know the damn value of gfr how is that possible and and we were having a laugh yani you know, the rest of the viva was was fun for me i am sure it was fun for her 
I can't say maybe she was terrified inside, but I had a lot of fun. And I kept on teasing her. I said, look, you know this, you know this, and you don't know that that one value, that one statistic. And she 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 was she used to laugh and she used to like embarrassed. And at the end, the poor soul, she said, sir, can I, can I, can I guess? I said, please, please guess. And she guessed 120 ml per minute. I said, you know what, for you, 120 is fine. I'll take 120 GA for her. It's around 125, but 120 is good because mashallah, you have given a good viva. Overall, last point is overall, I think recall based facts uh, were all right for your for this batch overall. Uh, however, as soon as I moved off road um, to an analysis or any clinical orientation, um, people were getting uncomfortable and that's not good to know because you're an outgoing class um, breaking news for you. You will be starting your uh, hospital rounds. Uh, next year inshallah inshallah hopefully covid will go down so guys hyperthyroidism will not come as a book it will come as a patient okay so you have to be comfortable with that um what else future advice please depend on one person for your studies you know who that person is you depend on yourself self-study better self-study sits flesh sit in one place for crying out loud read study watch listen discuss very very important for you metacognition is another uh, term that i'm using today you need to know yourself cognitively you need to know what works for you when in during the entire day what is the time when you are most receptive to studies Okay, don't just run yourself under the bus. Diagnose yourself for God's sake. What are your studying habits? How do you study? Is audiovisual your thing? Is reading your thing? Is listening your thing? Different, different people learn different way. Diagnose yourself. Know thyself as they say. Know yourself. Uh, COVID is here. I have to report this to you. COVID is here for a while. Maybe this online uh, way is the way to go. At least for maybe a year i really hope and pray that it's not the case uh, that we are there to spoon feed you everything okay but seriously uh, i think the world has changed and probably it will it has from the academic point of view it has changed forever so this online thing will be used i think in the future as well it's not it's it's a good thing uh, it's a good augmentation to learning and teaching and assessment um I will be posting more assessment linked videos uh, from now on till your prof comes. So stay tuned inshallah.